And if you have your Bible, thanks that you would turn with me to Ezekiel 37. And we're going to read from verse 1 through 14. And when you have it, say amen. And it reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Well, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to finish in a little bit. I haven't know that anything that is dry, that means that it's unfruitful, it's barren, it's, it ceases to produce, it ceases to work, it's unemotional, and it lacks moisture. And the bones was very dry, they didn't have no moisture. My God. And he said, Son of, unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. Now, if that had been one of us that the Lord had asked this question, we probably would have answered that question in little faith or no faith. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, these bones are dry, mm -hmm. but they're not just dry, they're dead. Mm -hmm. I don't see no signs of life. But Ezekiel, then he didn't respond in that way. He responded in faith. Yes, he said, Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, I can just imagine in my mind, he was saying, now, Lord God, you are God. You have all power in your hands in heaven and in earth. And if you want these bones to live, they'll live again. Yeah. How many know they'll live again? Yeah. Somebody said, live again. Live again. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. He knew God had the power to do all things but fail. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we're going to go on. And again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. He didn't say hear the word of man. He said, hear the word of the Lord. Because there's no power in man's word. But there's power in the word of God tonight. There's deliverance in the word of God tonight. Whatever we need is in the word of God tonight. There's life in the word of God tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, thus says the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. He's not just talking about any breath, but he's talking about the spirit of the living God. Yes. How many know that it takes the breath of God to cause us to live spiritually? Yes. Not only just spiritually, but even physically. Yes. said, and I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And, I was pro and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Now he was talking about, we're going to stop right there. I'm just going to flow with the Spirit of the Lord tonight. We're going to stop right there, and I'm going to tell you about these bones. I can imagine Ezekiel being in the valley of dry bones. Come on, musicians, give me a little bit of music on tonight. I need y'all to help me out tonight. I can imagine Ezekiel being in the valley of dry bones. Somebody come on and walk with me in the valley of dry bones on tonight. I can imagine him being in the valley of dry bones. As the Spirit of the Lord took him out of the vision and he began to stand in the middle of the dry bones. And I, I can imagine that he, everywhere he looked, all he seen was dry bones. And he began to look this way and he began to look that way. And all he seen was bones piled on top of bones. And he probably walked this way and walked that way. And every now and then he might have stepped on a finger bone. He might have went this way and every now and then he might have stepped on a leg bone. But when, he, when God, God began to breathe the breath of life into those bones, I can imagine that the toe bone was connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone was connected to the ankle bone. And the ankle bone was connected to the leg bone. And the leg bone was connected to the hip, the knee bone. And the knee bone was connected to the thigh bone. And the thigh bone was connected to the hip bone. Oh, the 
sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Even though the bones had come together and tendons and ligaments and muscles and nerves and kidneys and a heart and a brain and all this had come into the body and then skin came or covered it up. But there was still no breath. Somebody say no breath. No breath. My God, thank you Jesus. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet in exceeding great honor. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our part. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and you shall, you, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and perform it, says the Lord. And for a topic, we're going to use no matter how long you have been in the valley, you should live. How many know that sin separates us from God? Adam and Eve's sin caused that intimate fellowship with God to be broken. Here in our scripture text, the Lord is comparing the nation of Israel to the valley of dry bones coming to life because the sin has separated them from God. And in his eyes, they are a dead nation that need a spiritual revival. How many come for a revival on tonight? How many come for a revival on tonight? I'm not just talking about revival in the word itself, but I'm talking about let Ruach. When I was talking about that spirit, when I was in, the, in, in, in our scripture text, that spirit said the spirit. And in Hebrew, that word breathe, that means Ruach, means spirit, means breathe, breath.